Reading is the county town of Berkshire, home to a high population of 219,000. Easily one of the largest towns in the UK without a city status, Reading's railway station is the main transfer point for many passengers and tourists from all over the country. During 2013, the station was revamped and reconstructed with an enormous new footbridge leading all the platforms together, along with step-free access and escalators. The station was further improved with the arrival of overhead power lines for the electrification of the Great Western Main Line to Wales and Bristol. The brand new Class 800 Intercity Express trains are now seen daily running to the West Country from London Paddington. Alongside the main running line to the east of the station are three terminal platforms shared by South Western Railway and Great Western Railway local trains. The latter we shall be riding aboard for our trip to Gatwick Airport over the North Downs Line. Running over a partially electrified tracks for most of our journey, the half-hourly train service will take an average journey time of 1 hour and 20 minutes. At Redhill we see the unique reversal down the Brighton Main Line to London's second international airport. Electrification of the main line to Bristol and Cardiff is still ongoing but has proven to be a costly one indeed. In fact, reports have proclaimed that costing has tripled from its original budget. On the contrary, the line has improved in journey times considerably and has an environmentally friendly nature to it replacing diesel to electric. Viewers please note that the audio on the driver's eye view has been pre-recorded, so if certain parts sound and seem disorientated, this is the reason. A spur from the main line at Reading Southern Junction used the transfer of empty rolling stock and for certain passenger trains to reach the northern part of the station. Isambard Kingdom Brunel's Great Western Main Line opened through Reading on the 3rd of March 1840, just nine years before our line had arrived here. Spur Junction and just beyond is the River Kennet, a tributary of the River Thames which flows into the latter just a few hundred yards away at this point. It's this river that gives a navigable link between here and Bristol by means of the Avon and Kennet Canal. The Reading, Guildford and Reigate Railway were granted the Acts in Parliament in the years 1846 and 1847. The company's objective was to build a route towards the west and north country from the channel ports and avoid London itself. This was proven to be a time and cost cutter, therefore it opened in stages with this section between Reading and Farnborough North opening on the 4th of July 1849, the very same day the sections between Dorking West and Redhill opened. The line comes alongside the A329. Although closely associated with the South Eastern Railway, the company always had intentions of building the line themselves, even though it was way out of their normal operating territory. But Parliament prevented the company from doing so, declaring they wanted the line to be independent. A year later, however, owing to an SCR engineer overseeing the construction, the line was leased to that company and two years later, in 1852, they merged together. The relationship with the GWR was mystifying to say the least, as the company had offered running powers into the main Reading station but the SER couldn't come to a clear understanding and therefore a new station at Reading South Eastern was established.
That station had closed back in 1965 and the SER tracks were then rerouted into the main GWR station. Passing through the first station after Reading, early with a 10 car class 458 Juniper on a SWR service from Waterloo. The station was opened in 1863 by the SER. Just after early station, we pass the last conventional colour light signal controlled from the Thames Valley Signalling Centre at Didcot, but now from here to just beyond Sandhurst, our route is under the jurisdiction of Wokingham Signal Box. Winner's triangle can be described as utilitarian. A timber construction with bus shelter style accommodation waiting rooms was opened by British Rail in 1986. The reason behind its light construction was to reduce the load and the embankment through the Loddon Valley. A short distance away is Winash Station. The station opened in 1910 by the SER as Sindelsum and Hurst Halt, serving the two villages nearby. After that, in 1930, was renamed to Winash Halt before the suffix finally axed in 1969. We pass below the M4, the main motorway route, to the west and south Wales. In the background behind the trees, we can see the tall spire of St Paul's Church. We encounter a 30 mile per hour speed limit through Wokingham Station. Wokingham dates from the start of the SER's North Downs line. Today is the first stop for our GWR service to provide interchange with the SWR route towards Staines and Waterloo. Recent renovation plans have seen the erection of a brand new booking office in 2013, built at a cost of £6 million.
otra parte llevan distintas pestañas, la neutra es el cero. The next station is Blackwater. This is a great western railway service to Gatwick Airport. The signal box dates from 1933, during the time when the Southern Railway controlled the line, and interestingly, still is functioned by a mechanical lever frame. This is where the Waterloo Main Line diverges, at Staines Junction. The route was opened by the Staines, Wokingham and Woking Junction Railway Company, opening in July 1856 as a continuation from Staines. Worked by the London and South Western Railway, granted running powers were attained for their trains to run over SER metals to Reading. Electric propulsion was also included all the way from Virginia Water to Reading in 1939. Trains been powered over the third rail system of 750 volts DC. There were plans for this line to be electrified throughout, but prior to World War II, they were shelved. Even as recent as 2016, the proposal to electrify the route had been put forward to the Surrey County Council, explaining that electrifying the line will create new jobs in the area and stimulate £1.9 billion of economic growth. Ten years after the line had opened through here, Crowthorne Station was established. It had opened as a result of the governors of the nearby Wellington College piling pressure on the SER directors to establish a station here for their students. Contributing £500 towards the new station, and so named after the college, it wasn't until 1928 that the name was finally changed to Crowthorne. The station building was staffed until 1967, though the goods facilities had been taken out of use three years earlier. Thank you. 
Sandhurst is another utilitarian station dating from 1909. However, records do show that another small temporary halt existed on this site for just a year from 1852. Sandhurst is known worldwide for being more acknowledged for the Royal Military Academy, despite the fact the site is closer to Camberley. We cross over the Blackwater River, which will be follow the course of this river to Ash. Signalling has now passed from Wokingham to Guildford, TCB, that controls our route beyond Shalford Junction to Gomshaw, where Rygate Signal Box takes over. We've now arrived at Blackwater, dating from the start of the line in 1849. The town borders the counties of Berkshire, Hampshire and Surrey. River and railway pass underneath M3 motorway at Junction 4, the interchange with the A331. Close by is the line from Ascot to Guildford or Alton line that is running separately on the other side of the dual carriageway. Frimley station is nearby.
As you may recall, Farnborough North was the extremity of the line on the 4th of July 1849, when the final completion was inaugurated. Originally just called Farnborough, the Southern Railway added North on the end to distinguish it from the main LSWR station. We passed under the southwestern main line, the forerunner of the LSWR company, opened as the London and Southampton Railway between Nine Elms and Woking in 1838, the section to Basingstoke opening a year later. After passing Farnborough North, the last section in between here and Dorking West opened a month later on the 20th of August 1849. This bridge takes us under the A331. Half a mile away is Asheville Station on the Alton Line, consequently there is a walking transaction between the two stations. Over the intervening years, this station has been renamed many times, so in chronological order it has been called. North Camp Aldershot 1858, Aldershot Camp 1863, Aldershot North Camp 1879, Aldershot North Camp and South Farnborough 1910, Aldershot North 1923 and finally North Camp 1924. The Alton line now passes overhead, there is no direct rail connection between them in the down direction. However, the line can be accessed in the up direction towards Aldershot at Aldershot South Junction, where the train normally reverses towards Ascot. The third rail electrification is also now back again, all the way to Shalford Junction. This is where we pass over the Basingstoke Canal, built in 1794 to connect the River Thames with the Way navigation.
Though it was never a commercial success, the canal does remain open, but its usage is limited due to its low water supply and conservation issues. Even Ash has had various name changes between 1849 and 1926. The station once had four platforms until it was reduced to two after the Second World War. It's from here now at Ash we follow the course of the North Downs from where this line takes its name from, yet from here to Guildford we run to the north of the Hog's Back. The yellow mileposts, positioned on the right side of the track, are not measured from Red Hill like you would imagine, but are measured from the past headquarters of the SER, and that is Charing Cross via Red Hill. Here was the site of Ash Junction, where the former LSWR route towards Alton via Tongham diverged. Opened in 1856, it was built primarily for military traffic, the first railheads being Tongham and Farnborough, though both stations' passenger traffic became significantly reduced in 1870, with the opening of Aldershot Station on the more direct line from London. The laying of the spur between Ash and Aldershot diminished the passenger traffic via Tongham, and by the 1930s it had become a forgotten byway. The next station is Guildford. This is a Great Western Railway service to Gatwick Airport. In that period, the line was singled, and seven years later, the passenger traffic ceased with goods steering onto the nearby gaswork. But even this was unjustifiable, as that had closed in 1954, and this line fully gone of December of 1960. Wombra lies a mile away from the village that bears its name. As a matter of interest, the station is actually located in the village of Flexford and dates from 1891. Management, including Ash Station, is by the main TOC, South Western Railway. A 20 mile per hour speed restriction is imposed on this section of the track. The T on the board means the termination of the temporary speed restriction, meaning our driver can now increase back to the normal speed of 70 miles per hour.
We pass a South Western Railway Class 450-0 on route from Guildford to Ascot via Aldershot. No freight has been scheduled over the line since 2007. Recorded timetables showed one freight train in particular routed along here, being the travelling post office train that ran from Manchester Piccadilly running via Reading, Guildford, Redhill and Tonbridge to Dover. From 1988 it operated for just 16 years before it was withdrawn from service. Network Rail however had recommended an enhancement project during the 2008 strategic business plan to revive freight trains to operate over the route once more from the Channel Tunnel. We joined the Portsmouth direct line from Woking and immediately opposite the new Guildford line from Effingham Junction and Leatherhead. Today, Guildford is managed by the South Western Railway, providing the interchange with the North Downs, New Guildford and Portsmouth lines. It is in fact one of two stations in the town, the other being on the New Guildford line and named London Road. However, more passenger traffic centres on the existing one. There's been a station here since the 5th of May 1845 when the LSWR built the Portsmouth line through here. 
By 1880, the station had to be substantially rebuilt to allow the, for the provision of more tracks to cater for the ever-increasing forecast in passenger traffic, including the arrival of the new Guildford line that opened five years later. Guildford was also the terminus of the erstwhile Cranley line, opening in October 1865 by the London Brighton and South Coast Railway Company. It lived just shy of its centenary, closing in July 1965. Our Thames Turbo departs from Platform 4, heading due south towards the northern portal of Chalk Tunnel. A brief breath of fresh air and we are back entering another tunnel, known as St Catharines. Sometimes it is referred to as the Sand Tunnel. Time to split away from the direct line to Portsmouth that takes its third rail with it at Shalford Junction. We cross the River Way. Shalford retains its lattice girder of footbridge, but little else. The signal box still stands on the left, in body, but not in mind. The station together with Betchworth had been earmarked for closure in the 1963 reshaping of the British Railway Report. The report had also stated that they wanted to change the entire North Downs line into a trunk route. The scenery is magnificent, countryside bordered on either side as we follow the North Downs escarpment through the Vale of Holmesdale.
This stretch of the line is full of level crossings and we pass over one, this being the crossing over the A248 that is denoted as an automatic half barrier crossing. Chilworth was Chilworth and Albury when it opened with the line. BR unstaffed the station in 1967 and closed the two associated signal boxes that controlled a block section between Shalford and Gomshaw. Nowadays, the line is signalled by the signal box at Rygate. The East Somerset Railway preserved the old Victorian gates and footbridge on their restored railway at Cranmore, these being transported by low loader trucks. A mile and a half away from Chilworth, we pass a box hedge topiary, pruned in the shape of a pheasant on our left. Supposed to be designed for the pheasant sitting on the seat, the topiary is a memorial for Henry Wicks, a guard for the South Eastern Railway who was sadly killed after an accident occurred here in 1892. This is Brook Automatic Half Barrier Crossing. Great Western Railway provide the bulk of services along the route between Reading and Red Hill using either two car or three car class 165 or 166 turbo diesel multiple units running at intervals of every 30 minutes. Certain stations on the route are called at hourly which is operated from Reading and call at all stations to Red Hill. The Gatwick trains deliver the fast services. This is Barry's Lane. Gomshaw, one of three stations on the line to have staggered platforms. It was first called Gomshaw and Shear the suffix being referred to the nearby village, a mile to the west that the railway also served. Renaming took place in 1980. There had been an accident here on the 20th of February 1904, 
when a troop train bound for Southampton derailed at the station. Fortunately, there were no fatalities, but the locomotive crews of the Class C 294 and four members of the Northumberland Fusilier were injured. <laughs> Of course, the SER had played a massive part in this line, but in 1899 its operations passed into the hands of the London, Chatham and Dover Railway, to the Southern Railway in 1923, to the Southern Region of British Rail in 1948, first Great Western in 2004, and finally Great Western Railway in 2006. we passed the site of the one and only closed station on the line. In fact, it was more of a halt than a station, known as Westcott Range, and was shut in 1928. In the distance, we can see the town of Dorking, and if you look carefully, you may be able to see the spire of St Martin's Church. Dorking West is another station on the line and staggered platforms and was not provided with a footbridge because the SER found it easier for passengers to cross behind trains if two were in the station instantaneously. As it was the first station in the town, the station had just been called Dorking, remaining so until the Southern Railway renamed it in 1923 as Dorking Town. A change of suffix had come about in 1987 by Network South East. Remember, this was also the temporary terminus from Red Hill, as one of the two original sections of the 4th of July 1849. Another station had opened in the town on the hitherto LB SCR line from Horsham, reaching Dorking in 1867. It keeps its play name Dorking to this day, owned by Southern, providing train services to London Victoria and London Waterloo, though the latter is run by SWR. The station is within easy walking distance of the town's third railway station, which we're now arriving at, Dorking Deep D.
A simple wooden construction opened in February 1851 as Box Hill and Leatherhead Road, though this was just for a month and the name was shortened soon afterwards. To avoid confusion with the Box Hill and West Humble station on the previously alluded to LBSCR line was renamed Deep Dean in 1923. Dorking Deep Dean was named in the same year as Dorking West. The station had closed between 1917 to 1919 as a temporary economy measure during World War I. This is where we cross over the former LB SCR lines known as the Sutton and Mole Valley Railways. They were constructed between 1847 and 1868. Lending a helpful hand to the construction was the LSWR and the LB SCR sponsored Horsham, Dorking and Leatherhead Railway. There was connection with the line but was superfluous and the track was lifted in 1946. Steam trains were frequently seen over the line before 1965 when they were replaced by Class 206 diesel electric multiple units built in a similar design to Hastings DMU sets but the visual difference was the width hence these 206s were nicknamed tadpoles. The express service between Reading and Gatwick commenced operation on the 12th of May 1980 using the Slamdor Class 119 DMUs. These trains were modified for this service to generate extra luggage space for air travellers, removing the buffet car that used to be in the centre of the train. Notice the extraordinary length of Platform 2, being able to accommodate a train of seven coaches, whereas the other can only hold four at Betchworth Station. Mention must be made of the Betchworth Quarry Railway which had a connection here to the nearby Dorking Greystone Lime Company who had three pits north of here. A very interesting historical point of view to this railway was the fact that Quarry Railway operated with four different track gauges. The standard gauge operated from a junction to the eastern and southern kiln batteries before a conversion of three feet, two and a quarter inches took over from there. The other gauges serving the works were the 19-inch gauge line that ran from a standard gauge siding to the Hearthstone mine and a short two-foot gauge section of the track that ran exclusively between the eastern and southern kiln batteries.
The locomotives have all been preserved, scattered in many museums, for example, the unofficially named standard gauge coffee pot engine number one of 1871 is now on display at the Beamish Museum in County Durham. Captain Baxter, or Baxter Loco, the very last to operate on the line, still runs on the Bluebell Railway, returning to traffic in the celebrations of that railway's 50th anniversary. Finally, the three foot and two and a quarter inch locomotives were tastefully preserved with one to become a static exhibition at the Amberley Chalk Pits Museum, whilst the other is in private ownership. Over the level crossing, past the signal box and into the electrified territory for the final time as we arrive at Reigate, the terminus of southern trains from London, Victoria. In 1849, this was Reigate Town. The suffix has been officially dropped with the electrification reaching here in 1933. The signal box dates from 1929, replacing the original that was positioned at the other end of the station.
Originally close by but totally separate, a station on the London and Brighton Railway opened in 1841 called Red Hill and Rygate Road. The following year, the SER opened another station with the name Red Hill on its main line from Charing Cross to Dover. Both companies unified together to open the present Red Hill station on the 15th of April 1844. Below the main signal aspect, a subsidiary or calling on signal illuminates along with the platform allocation number. This signal allows our driver to pass a red signal, but it reminds them that platform 1 is also partially occupied. A sharp radius curve at 20 miles an hour brings us around to a northerly heading to join the former LBSCR main line, now the Brighton main line from Victoria, marking the end of the North Downs line. The LBSCR operated a horse-drawn omnibus around the town, but that has long gone. We can now see what the obstruction is. A four-car class 377 Electrostar sits on the far end of the platform, designated Platform 1A, ready to form a service to Tonbridge. On May 1st, 1868, Red Hill ceased to be on the main line from Dover with the opening of the Seven Oaks cut-off from St John to Tonbridge. Today, it is still used by a half-hourly southern service from Victoria. With the train crews having changed ends, our train now heads back from whence it came for the final leg of our trip towards Gatwick Airport. Heading south, we see the line to Tombridge diverge off towards the east in a remarkably straight route due mainly as its chief purpose was to reach its destination from London, with settlements being considered a secondary priority. It was opened on the 26th of May 1842. The brand new Class 712 car units are now seen regularly over the Brighton network and is operated by Thames Link. Here was where the steam sheds were located until they were condemned from service in 1964. Converging from the left is the main route from London, 
known as the Quarry Line. It was constructed in 1899 after the LB SER had continuous disputes of the line's usage with the SER around Red Hill. The quarry lines completely avoid Red Hill and most of the Brighton traffic was diverted this way, but the LB SER continued to retain running powers into Red Hill until railway grouping. We now join the main line, running alongside on the down slow, as it is technically called, until Gatwick. This is Arlswood Station, opened in 1868. Four platforms were provided in 1906 when the route was quadrupled as far as three bridges. Nonetheless, the ones on the main line closed in the 1980s. Signalling is now under the control of Three Bridges Power Signal Box that controls the vast majority of the main line between Brighton and Norbury as well as other branch line routes. A Gatwick Express Class 387 EMU runs non-stop to Victoria. Salford Station has only got platforms on the slow lines, being a late addition to the Brighton Line network, opening in 1915. The Salford's oil terminal that used to serve Gatwick Airport were made redundant in the late 1980s. However, some track work still serves the aggregate terminal. Note the station building over the slow lines at Hawley, a reminder that this is an original station, dating from the line's opening. Thank you. 
On the approach to Gatwick Airport, London's second international airport, handling up to 46.1 million passengers a year to hundreds of destinations across the globe. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II officially opened today's station on the 9th of June 1958, making it the first airport in the world to be interconnected with air, rail and road facilities. There were two previous stations here before, in 1891 and 1946 respectively. Our Class 165 Turbo will empty out here on the platform for a total of 9 minutes before reversing back towards Red Hill and once more to reverse back to Reading.